Hello my soccer universe, it was so close, I still decided to wear Lusk, but it was so close to get a really 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 famous win and last kick of the game and it was not to be. Uh, I cannot tell you how rare wins in Salzburg are, I think Lusk only had ever two since it's the Red Bull Imp um, Imperium, if only one, I mean the one I can definitely remember. It is not a common occurrence and when you're within seconds of achieving that and you drop the win with the last kick of all of the game, it's just gut-wrenching. It literally is gut-wrenching and we'll talk about that game. Um, and despite Lasker not being in second place anymore but falling to third thanks to Sturm Graz winning at Austria Vienna, I actually thought this was a positive performance because before the international break there were like three games where it did not look all that right what was happening. Um, but I think that was a very positive performance almost for the entire game finding a great balance between good offense and good defense. But yeah, so close, so close, so close. Uh, thankfully, Milan escaped a similar fate, <laughs> but we'll talk about that in the Serie A review video. We had another big result uh, in, and we'll talk about that as well um, on the bottom of the table where we have now a new last place team. So that's also, um, I don't want to say exciting because it's, I don't think, uh, a new last place team is necessarily exciting, but you know, it is a remarkable result. Uh, we also had in Germany, uh, we have for the first time Union Berlin uh, losing, so we have no unbeaten team in Germany anymore. And what's more is ahead of the big clash next weekend. Bayern show to be in good form again and Dortmund are Dortmund and throwing away a game that they never should have. Gotta be that honest. So, you know, uh, it is what it is. We still have the two feel good stories up top, but overall it is kind of, yeah, Bayern is just, you know, we, let's give the um, competitors a little bit of an advantage and then that we get a real challenge and move through. I would say we'll start with the games um, in Austria, of course, and yes, we have the 3-1 win over, for Wolfsburg over Lucena, meaning that Lucena is slowly coming down. Um, we have a big 5-0 win of Rapid over Tirol, uh, which was not at all expected. Remember, Tirol just before the break beat Lask 4-1 in uh, Pushing slash Linz. So that was a, b a big result, but you know, those two teams, uh, it, the, the matchup is not favorable to Tirol in a way. But we have to talk salzburg Lask. I, you know, in 30 seconds I tried to summarize that game. Uh, salzburg started with a lots of energy and very much on, on the front foot, but Lask could actually absorb that pressure. And um, while being solid on the back, they always managed, and especially after 50 minutes, to run a few interesting count counter attacks where they actually got probably the better shots off. Now, um, it lasted for about another 15 minutes, in the uh, 15, 20, 20 minutes. In the last 10 minutes, Salzburg so and really had a few good chances uh, where, to be honest, probably they should have taken the lead at that point. However, Lask made some good adjustments at the half. Um, and I have to say, for about 15 minutes, I felt that the, the, that the game is very much at a stalemate. And I also have to, have, have to say, at that point, I uh, had to help my daughter with her homework a little bit. So while I was on the on the game, I was also distracted at the same time. But I felt that the game was falling a little, a little bit of sleep, which I did not mind because Lask really needed to get this game tight. However... Then they got a free kick uh, around the 60th minute and Michal, it was close to a touchline, but you know, not quite a corner kick, a little bit of a And he curls it onto the crossbar. If it's just a few centimeters down, this one goes in for a, f a really, really, really great go-ahead goal. Uh, and at that point, then I thought that Lusk actually had overall the better chances. I mean, it was not a game of big chances, but they had the better chances. They were more threat-threatening at that point. And they took them the lead in the 78th minute, or relatively deservedly, I, I, I would say. Um, when after corner kick, a ball comes to Michal, who plays play begin, Ljubicic puts it in the net. 1-0, 78th minute. Only 12 minutes. Great. 
And at that point, I also have to say that um, I really felt that Salzburg was contained. There was not much coming. Well, stuff was coming then. They really pushed forward and Lusk fell back. And But I, I, I was still argue up until the 85th minute, I actually felt safe. Yes, there were a few chances here, here and there, but with, with, with a goal and defense being south, I never felt that there's a really... Yes, I think there was one shot that that, that went really just that wide, but overall, it looked all right. And then uh, Coach Kuper does what he loves to do. He makes um, defensive changes in the 80s, 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 80s. And from those changes on, I had the feeling that Lusk did not get out of their own half any, anymore. Still... Yes, there were some uh, shots from Salzburg and there were chances, but I kind of felt safe, especially when it was a 9, 9, 9, 9, 4, 5 minute, the last shot. All fine. Salzburg get a last chance. Lask clears it and then the ball falls to Ljubicic, who wants to play it safely back to a last player. He plays, of course, to a Salzburg player, Paul Pavlovic, who blew, put it onto Soleil, who scores the equalizer with the last kick of the game. I cannot tell you how deflated I was. I mean, this exciting building, this excitement building, you're getting this huge win in Salzburg. And then it's all deflation. Really, really, really frustrating. But, you know, in the end, would I have taken a 1-1 ahead of the game? Yes, any day I would have taken that one. But that 1-1, one, one, it felt uh, had a little bit of a loss feeling. And actually, Salzburg really will probably use this to boost themselves. Um, I already said, um, I mean, Klang for 3-2 in Hardback, but the big one is that Altach won 3-2 in Ried. It's a perfect 3-2 with Atten Nuhio. I think he played for Ried at one time, giving them an early lead, but then Ried turning around, 2-1 lead at the halftime. But in the second half, TBD and Tafarotti turn it around and Altach get a 3-2 win, meaning they leapfrog Ried. And Ried at this point, yeah, in real, real trouble slash Worries. Uh, and then in the big game uh, in the uh, evening, so um, the other, uh, other how, how, how say, top game was between uh, Austria and Sturm, where Sturm took and deserved it early, but then Austria could make the game kind of level. Although Sturm had a, pre a, pretty, a pretty big uh, chance to um, make it too, but Austria as well. Uh, it was a rather even game where probably a draw would have been a bit more deserved. However, as soon as Böwing makes it then 2-0 for Sturm Graz, Austria completely fell flat and the 3-0 basically confirmed that Sturm were the better team at this stage. And so with all these results, we have now Sturm going back in second place. Salzburg now is within touching distance. You know, it's 2-2-2. We clearly have three teams that are above the rest. Then it gets interesting. Yes, Rapid has a game in hand, which could put them in a touching distance with Lusk if they would win that against Hart Hartberg. Um, but yeah, it seems rather even then. Uh, there is not a clear top six, yes, but for the first time, Austria Luzern is not in the top six uh, anymore since they have Pepin Fuel. And as I said, on the bottom, Alltag now ahead of Hartberg, ahead of Reed. Uh, that's a big one. And the other change is now that uh, given the bars, given that the last has been a little bit falling back, uh, they are not now the best performing team anymore. That's Sturm Graz who are outperforming their own ex expedition as Reed, the local rival for Lask, as you may know, is of course all the way behind. Um, uh, final regular season sta s s standings, um, Austria Vienna, thanks to the three points that have been deducted, are always kind of in, out, in, out. So uh, that will be interesting. Austria Klagenfurt. Yeah, is kind of in there um, and at the moment they are ahead of us all Austria who are odds on to win the relegation round I don't need to tell you that Salzburg is the favorite in the Austrian league uh, I think it's more in interesting who will uh, finish second place in the European uh, spots overall uh, in the upcoming round um, we have more or less what would have been Paul Bottom against first Alltag against uh, Sal Salzburg however the big match is, of course, the last one between Rapid Vienna and Austria Vienna, the big Viennese derby, which has been draws, 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 draws over the last few years. There has, have, has, has been not much between those two. Uh, Lask have a game against Hartberg, which they should finally win again, I gotta say. Moving over to Germany on Friday evening, it started with a pretty big win of Bayern um, over Leverkusen. That game was already done the moment the kick, kick, kick kicked off. Sané in the third minute already make, makes it 1-0 Musiala, who assisted uh, two 
Yeah, he assisted two and scored the third. Also, he, 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 he scored second goal and he assists even Mane. It was only one way. The second half, yeah, Mane had a goal called back. Then Thomas Müller in the fourth make, makes the fourth one. It was a beatdown of the highest order. And, you know, Bayern, you know, they have been they have been losing here. Uh, and, you know, throughout the drawing games, everyone was talking already, already about a big crisis. Nope. It, it's typically bad, but um, on the other side, the big story was, of course, Uli Hoeneß in the, uh, the talk show defending Qatar and that the fans had going. So that's always unrest at Bayern Munich. And now it is about uh, how to um, uh, pro or against Qatar, um, which I find always interesting. I have, have to say the Bayern fan base is usually quite at the same pulse as the, um, you know, as the plight for the real fans, whereas I think the Bayern lead leadership is always, uh, you know, they seem so detached from the real, the real core fan families. I find this a very interesting dynamic uh, there. Um, big win for Eintracht Frankfurt over Union Berlin. That was what they had. That was a game that was kind of uh, starting out slow, but with Götze um, unlocking the deadlock already early on in 12th minute after a brilliant assist by Cole Lumani, who was a live wire through the entire, the entire game. Um, the game went already in um, Frankfurt's direction um, and yes, they kept the game tight but had more chances. Only Berlin were not happy, happening again with Lindstrom with a brilliant solo effort, uh, makes it 2-0. Second half, it got a little bit more hard for uh, since Kolomuani then got sent off with a second yellow, but overall Union Berlin never re-threatened. Re re it was kind of the first off performance by Union Berlin and Frankfurt are slowly finding their form and that is a pretty good squad I have to say that might as well push for Champions League uh, spots as well. The biggest result probably was Köln's 3-2 win over Dortmund and that, my friends, <laughs> uh, was a weird one in so many ways. Uh, at first of all, the game, uh, I repeat what the commenter said, Köln has all the energy but no precision, Dortmund has all the, all, the, all the precision but no energy. However, the precision in the end won then out. Um, because uh, um, Dortmund could create chances and Köln were very much on, on the back was starting around midway of the first half and um, with a Bellingham assist to Brandt cutting open the uh, Köln defense uh, it was 1-0 for Dortmund probably should have been 2 uh, because Dortmund then really created a few chances however coming out, out, out of the half very quickly on Florian Kainz, Ikikos and Tigges coming from Dortmund to Köln and yes it was Modest who moved from Köln to Dortmund and also another one. Köln paid a little bit for Tigges, who scored. Dortmund paid quite a sum for the best uh, Köln striker he didn't score. However, there was a funny seed at the beginning of the game. The game was just a few seconds old when uh, Köln coach uh, Baum Baumgart kind of whistled uh, because more this was then then they they embraced. It was a it was a really fun scene there. Dejan Ljubicic, with a really great individual effort, made it 3-1 to Köln in the 71st. However, the chances were there and an own goal by Schmitz in the 70th. They made, made, made the game tight, tight again. And in the end, probably Dortmund would have deserved an equalizer. But it was such a game that they probably should never have won. The expected goals told, told the story. Köln won 3-2. But it was pretty much the opposite. Expected goals should have been two for a current, less than two, a little bit more than three for Tor for, for Dortmund. So really, really interesting stuff uh, there. Freiburg, not quite on top, but you know, uh, getting close to Union Berlin with a 2-1 uh, win over Mainz, a game of two halves. Where the first half it was all Freiburg with Gregoric uh, scoring the first, the first one and being uh, very much um, there to get the second and go through uh, Kire. I mean, he hits the crossbar uh, with, with, with the shot and Kiare pulls it in. And Freiburg really looked rather safe. However, Martin puts one back after the half and then Mainz had really, really chances and, and Freiburg couldn't liberate themselves. However, they hang on to a win that sees them now go joint top with, um, uh, by, uh, with uh, Union. And then uh, a result. I mean, we had some other results. Leipzig getting an easy 4 0 win over Bochum. Wolfsburg fighting back um, to uh, win Stuttgart 3 2. I guess Stuttgart 3 2 with Stuttgart. I'm telling you already, these are my most favorite jerseys that Stuttgart were wearing. They unfortunately didn't bring them luck. 
And the Bremen Gladbach game was over after 15 minutes when Bremen already had a 3 0 lead. Uh, that came a, a bit surprising, but I have to say, Bremen are in a really, really, really good form at this point. Um, and today, Hertha won one game against Hoffenheim and Augsburg, uh, winning 3 2 at Schalke despite getting the winner with a man down. So, also quite so uh, quite an interesting result there. And you know Augsburg having having now two really big wins in a row. One has has to say against Bayern and against Schalke. And again, one is thinking that Augsburg might not have to do anything with relegation. Here's the table as I said on top only on Freiburg, but then Bayern and you see the big goal difference there. Already only two points behind and level with Dortmund. And Dortmund better get something next week. It has to, ha ha has to be said there. Uh, Frankfurt moving into the European spot as it's current. Uh, Gladbach is moving out. Leipzig slowly moving out as well. And look at the bottom. Leverkusen. Those, they, this is a team that's really, really, really in trouble. And is the biggest disappointment so far. Um, I find it funny that Bochum and Bayern are about the same. Um, on the DSD, this disappointment level is only on in Freiburg. Still the positive surprise at the beginning of the season. I really hope that the Bundesliga will stay that tight even in 20 match days. I just don't believe it because I think Bayern has been, you know, poked enough. And I think we will see in October Bayern, up, when, when the World Cup starts, I would be surprised if Bayern are not the clear leaders in the Bundesliga. And as I said, there is no team that has uh, uh, no losses so far. However, there's, uh, there are two teams that have no wins so far with Stuttgart and Bochum. Uh, expected standings, we have now Stuttgart down in the relegation spot, Schalke, Bochum, the two, two, of, two blue teams going uh, probably, probably down, Freiburg and Frankfurt now moving ahead of Gladbach with that big loss, but still, uh, Bayern, Dortmund, Leipzig and Union that are running out the top four at the moment. Next weekend, yes, we have actually two, two pretty big games, we have of course Dortmund against Bayern, uh, the biggest game in Germany, but the early Sunday game between Gladbach and Köln, that's a huge derby as well. Freiburg have, have, have to go ahead and Union play at Stuttgart. So, um, again, I think it's a rather interesting round all over. I also want to see what Bremen can do at Hoffenheim. So that's it from me from this week in the Bundesliga. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please drop a line below if you want to add any, any, anything. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.